Chen is a crafty and smart lawyer in the courtroom, but his work ethic is very different from the traditional image of a lawyer. He does whatever it takes to pursue money and power and is known as a black lawyer. In a lawsuit to win for his wealthy female clients, he and his assistant, brother Vit, even replaced the witness's eyeglasses at one point. This makes it impossible for the witnesses to see it in court, thus nullifying the relevant evidence. Chen is graceful, handsome in appearance and fluent in Chinese. The clients he serves are wealthy and powerful members of society. Instead, his goal is to acquire more wealth and power. However, behind the facade of this glamorous lawyer, is Chen really as dark as he appears? The twist in the story occurs when Chen wins a lawsuit and he is retaliated against by his opponents. At the moment of crisis, a mysterious man steps in and saves his life. Chen looked at the handsome man with gratitude, so he offered to buy him dinner to show his gratitude for saving his life. However, the man leaves in a hurry because of an urgent phone call, leaving Chen curious and grateful. Meanwhile, Tin is a Taekwondo instructor with exceptional skills and appearance. He rushed home after receiving an emergency phone call, thinking his grandmother had fainted. It was actually a prank played by his family for his birthday. Tin was angry but patient and caring with his little niece. His family consists of his grandmother, his little niece, and a neighbor friend, Sister Nan, and her husband. The family atmosphere is very counsy and harmonious. The little niece understands and appreciates her uncle's care and wishes him to find his love soon. But she saw her uncle come home and fall asleep from fatigue. The purchases that were supposed to be his responsibility were being handled by his young niece. However, something terrible happened just down the road. The young niece was involved in a car accident on the road and unfortunately passed away. Driving the car is Tan, the congressman's son, instead of taking Tan away. The police keep stopping Tin from getting close. The news is heard by Chen, who seems to smell a business opportunity. The Tin family doesn't need compensation from the congressman. At his niece's funeral, Cockney Tan didn't even show up to apologize. It demanded that Tin know the error of his ways, publicly apologize, and be punished appropriately. Tin protests every day with a sign. He hoped that the case would get the attention of the community, so that Tin could be brought to justice. That day as he was heading back, he saw a familiar face. He saved him once again. Their destinies are as entwined as their watches and buttons from this moment on. Tin thought Chen had seen the news and found him. He was particularly pleased to learn that Chen was a lawyer. He needed exactly one legal aid, more friends, more ways. But while Chen is not wrong to be a lawyer, he is not on Tin's side. He's a lawyer on the congressman's side. His purpose was to persuade Tin to accept the 10 million baht compensation offered by the MP. Chen even spoke out about his niece dying and not being able to come back to life to receive this compensation. Isn't it good that he's comfortable for the rest of his life? This enrages Tin, who rips up the check, spills it in Chen's face, and tells Chen to get out. He told those people that even if he couldn't fight them, he would fight to the end, thinking of Tin's defiant attempts at justice during the day. Chen thought of something from the past, something bad. He thinks Tin is a fool, a fool who will surely regret it in the future. Just as he did back then, coming out of the shower, Tin notices that his cell phone has been receiving records of collections. Not only was this thing strange, but there was a lot more filming going on in front of the house. They also say rumor mumbling things like Tin drinks. There's nothing, doesn't care about his niece. That's what got her hit by a car and killed, and even now opening an account to collect donations, and so on. Yes, this is all Chan's tactic. He used public opinion to create false rumors and put pressure on Tin's side. Even when Tin goes to Chan and theorizes, Chan is organized and even molests Tin. <laughs> because he's convinced Tin can't fight him. As Tin gasps and tries to make a move, he pulls the heavy weight out of his arms. Now Tin had to behave. He doesn't understand at all why Chen did what he did. <laughs> Chen is also very frank and says outright that he is all about money and power. He's experienced life without both, so that's all he has eyes for now. Tin was disappointed and upset. As a lawyer, Chen does not seek fairness and does not protect the weak. Instead, he became a tool of those people. But Chen laughs and says he's had this thought before. But in the end he knew that he was just a little lawyer. What could he change? So what he's doing now is helping the weak ah. He's helping the weak fight for more compensation. Tin doesn't agree with him. Even if the world is full of bad, we as individuals shouldn't be bad. Tin thinks that Chen's help isn't the right way at all. He wants Chen to tell the congressman that he doesn't want a dime. All he needs is for the congressman's son to come to his knees and apologize sincerely to his niece. Tin's request looked ridiculous to Chen because those guys would know the first thing about apologizing. You are asking for nothing more than money. This negotiation broke up unhappily. Tin's untamped look intrigued Chen, and the congressman's side refuses to let his son meet Chen. They also refused to talk about a single detail of what exactly happened, which struck Kun as odd. He approaches Kun Ho Ten to talk to him, and is also interrupted by the councilman. 
The congressman even flat out said he wasn't allowed to meet with Tan. This makes Chen suspect that there's more to this incident than just a car accident. The next day, Chen was fired by the congressman and outright forbidden to touch the case again. This heightened his suspicions of what the congressman was afraid of. Chen may seem like the kind of bad guy who serves the powerful, but he's not. Chen didn't choose to give up after realizing that things weren't simple. Instead, he flatly stated to the congressman's face that he would find out whatever he wanted to know. Chen is not the only one who has suffered retaliation from the congressman's son. Even Tin fell to the side of the road in a drunken fight with a passerby because his reputation had turned sour. It was Chen who came and took him back. With all his clothes off, is something going to happen between them? This is Chan's house. What kind of princess look is this at this point? Din. A 2-2. Since she was drunk and broken, Tin was worried if anything had happened between the two last night. Tin just threw up all over him, so Chen took all his clothes off. Chen says that if he does want something to happen, it will be in a situation where both parties are sensible. Then the two are quite sensible now. Chen goes to Tin actually to talk to him about the case. He realizes that the case is more than just a car accident. Now that he's been fired over there, he's hoping to be Tin's lawyer. At this point, Tin is not believing him at all. He had only just arrived at his doorstep when he realized that his home had been burglarized and turned upside down. It's a good thing. Grandma wasn't home at first and didn't get hurt. Watching the house fall into disarray, Tin's first thought is that it's a conspiracy by Chen. Strangely enough, nothing was missing from the house either. Chen installed cameras in the house and taught Grandma how to use the camera to view it on her cell phone. Tin came to be reluctant to accept his unknown kindness. He was still full of distrust of him. Still, Watching Chen try out the camera clarity made me laugh involuntarily. Chen tells Tin that all the cameras on the street were vandalized when the thieves patronized it. This is clearly not a coincidence. He found a car recorder in a nearby car. The man in the recorder is the one who taught Chen a lesson in the bathroom. He's on the congressman's side. The camera did the trick, and together they combined their efforts to catch the man. But during the exchange, Chen accidentally gets cut by a knife. Chen literally teases Tin all the time, even when he's rubbing it in. So, what exactly is the congressman looking for over there? Chen has a great royal friend, Sister Rose, who owns a bar. They have known each other for many years and are very close friends. Chen came this time to inquire about something. Two days ago the congressman's son, Tan, came into the bar and got drunk. He wondered if drunk he had reviewed anything. For him to inquire about this, he would have to mention Sister Maya, the resident singer in the bar. She and some of the girls were the ones who accompanied Tan that day. Sister Rose and Sister Maya are also clearly seeing some marvelousness between these two. For Tan, Sister Maya was impressed because Tan was drunk after two drinks and babbling. He did mention one thing while he was on a bender. Though, I wonder what the father's face would look like if he saw the doll. The doll turns out to be one of the key clues. No wonder there were people sent to Tin's house earlier to look for the doll. Tan goes to Tin's house and asks Grandma to help find out all of her niece's dolls. It's all ordinary toys, nothing special. Instead, there was a doll that kinda caught Chan's attention. This doll is a niece's favorite, much less a favorite to take out and play with, because this doll is from when the family was in bad shape. But the students have dolls that dear Uncle Tin sewed for her. Stitch by stitch, Tin is such a warm-hearted uncle. The dolls are nothing special, and Chen hopes to take them back to study them. Grandma agreed, and Grandma appreciated Chan's help. She seems to see that Chen is tough on the outside and soft on the inside. She wishes Chen would come and talk to her when he has time. In the evening, Tin comes home and asks Grandma if Chen was here. He wants Grandma to leave Chen alone. Chen, as a person, is just good looking on the outside, but bad on the inside. But Grandma hits the nail on the head when she says that maybe Chen isn't what you think he is. Maybe there's a reason he's the way he is. Grandma's intuition told her that Chen should be a very kind person, but something really horrible happened to him to make him like this. People, uh, tend to camouflage themselves with heavy armor only after they've been hurt. Tin looked puzzled. But Grandma's words seemed to hold truth. Look at Chen's happy face when he gets his first case. Just know that Chen was once a hot-blooded and righteous lawyer. He succeeds in helping a mother-in-law and feels his duty as a lawyer to help protect the weak. His mother has also been there for him, supporting and accompanying him. But not until he got a case, a case of evicting villagers because capital was eyeing the land. Chen brought his mother to the local area to provide legal assistance. However, it ended in a blood lesson. My youngest niece has a very good friend, Polly who is going away to school with her mom. Before she left, she wanted to visit her grandmother one more time and say goodbye. Grandma happens to be packing up her niece's belongings and asks Polly to choose one as a memento. Yes, Polly just happened to choose that all-important doll. In order to be able to inquire about the doll, Tang goes to Tin's school. He wants to get the kids to help through ice cream, but it turned out that after asking around only one little girl, 
had ever seen her niece carry around a doll. That's a puppy doll that makes a hello with wolf, but this doll was not among the dolls Chen brought back. Today was a complete waste of time. Because of the press conference, Tin dresses up properly, but Chen stops him. He needed Tin to be messy and a bit unkempt, preferably looking all a sweaty and smelly on him, because he wants to create the impression that Tin is the kind of guy who runs around for his knees. He needs this persona to generate public sympathy, because at the press conference, Chen said he had the evidence, drawing attention and alarm from the legislators. He volunteered to see Chen with his son Tin. Before they could talk for more than a few moments, Tin made a threatening remark about Chen. Chen bluntly states that people who only know how to terrorize others do so because they leave their lives in constant fear. What exactly is Tan afraid of? Well, it's obviously his father he's afraid of. Tan is always so cranky and likes to solve problems violently. We just knew he must have learned it from somewhere. And you see the way his father treats him, slapping and choking him at every turn. You can see that Tan, though hateful, as a pitiful situation. This conversation did not end happily. Chen did not agree to the terms given by the MP and this gave up intervening in the case. Before leaving, Chen told the councilman and the guys that he found the doll. Upon returning, the councilman bluntly states that if the evidence is strong, he will arrange for Ten to turn himself in. He's still a kid. He'll do a couple years in jail. Tops, Ten looked at his father quite incredulously, and all he got was another slap in the face. Ten talks to the, his closest bodyguard, hoping he can't get him out of here. But the only replies that the councilman won't allow him to leave, and Ten becomes even more desperate. His closest brother, the, is just a dad's man and doesn't stand by his side. Then the congressman's side did a lot of backroom deals. For example, they got Ten expelled from a taekwondo school and intentionally poisoned the puppy grandma fed him. Even they set Ten's house on fire. Good thing no one was hurt. Chen also got the fire out in time. They find the ring with Ten's name engraved on it at the scene, which gives them leverage to switch to Chen. Chen used the picture of the ring to get the congressman to stop and not turn on Tin and Grandma. Otherwise, these photos will be posted somewhere. And then, the image of the MP will be lost. The congressman was so angry, he exploded. He thought his son had gotten him into trouble again in private. Not for the first time after all. The congressman felt that this useless son would only cause him trouble. Although Tin denies that he went to burn the house down, the councilman still comes down hard on him. Even the congressman put his head in the pool. It's really hard to imagine a father doing this. It's natural for Tin's side to celebrate after this incident, because surely there's no new action from the congressman. But Tin seems to notice something a little off about starting the fire. Through all the details, Tin realizes that the people who set the fire should not be Tan and the others. But Chen, who is reluctant to call the police, Chen was in front of Tin's house when the fire started. Chen was holding a large fire extinguisher ready to go. Tin's guess wasn't wrong. It was indeed Chen, who asked Sister Maya and the others to steal Tan's ring and then set fire to this self-induced drama. However, his intention is good, and it is to deter the members side from making any further moves. He can't protect Tin and Grandma, but Tin doesn't see it that way. He thinks Chen is just getting revenge because he was fired over there. He and his grandmother were nothing more than twos, and he disdained Chen's unscrupulous methods. Chen asks Tin rhetorically, you don't like my ways, so what can you do? If you can do anything, don't dream you can't protect those around you. The two men parted on bad terms because of their different philosophies. Maybe for now, Chen is right, their enemies are powerful, and without outsmarting them, they may always be in the same place. But Chen thinks too little about it. He didn't consider what if he hurt Grandma. Tin can't be entirely wrong. Insist that the desire for fairness and justice in the human heart should also be there. 